Massive granite stones lined up at Karnak in France, some weighing 350 tons. Why? What were they trying to do here? The mystical properties of granite may be the reason why these stones exist. Ancient civilizations may have intentionally laid these stones out so that the granite would interact with ancient atmospheric pressures that would react with the granite. Perhaps these ancient atmospheric pressures energised the giant granite blocks during Saturn's supernova, the event that we have labelled the Squatterman event. All ancient cultures speak of the gods interacting in the sky, and the biblical narrative especially is like a handbook to this event. At Karnak, some 3,000 blocks of granite exist here, and granite is known to illuminate in tribal luminescence. What if ancient civilizations found out that they could harness the plasmatic activity to illuminate the granite and even use the glowing properties of granite as a harnessed energy? In Egypt, we have granite obelisk, pyramids, and other apparatus that may be linked to the same involvement of these events. Maybe they were harnessing the plasma for energy. The Karnak stones may be the recreation, the reenactment of the plasmoids that were witnessed. Perhaps our ancestors were trying to recreate the great energies that they witnessed in the sky with these efforts. These energies may have had profound effects on human health, reversing aging and curing ailments, generating positive energies throughout the human body and mind simply by touching the stones under this plasmatic display. A sort of recharge station for the human mind. Just a thought. The Karnak stones are located in Brittany, in France. They are one of the most extensive collections of megalithic sites in the entire world. These prehistoric standing stones, numbering over 3,000, were erected by the pre-Celtic people of Brittany during the Neolithic period, and this is thought to have been around 3,300 BC. And get this, the purpose and methods used to construct these stones remains the subject of intrigue and speculation the world over. The Karnak stones vary significantly in size, with some standing as tall as 6 metres, and most weigh between 5 to 10 tonnes, with the most extensive weighing 350 tonnes. These granite stones were likely quarried from nearby bedrock and transported using methods that are not known to this day. Modern day researchers have suggested that even though the exact techniques to move these stones remains unknown, these ancient people may have used artificial earth ramps and pulleys. This is only a suggestion. Granite. This is a common material used in megalithic structures, for reasons that nobody knows. This material is known for its durability and piezoelectric properties, which means it can generate an electric charge under mechanical stress. And it's this characteristic that has led to theories about ancient civilizations potentially harnessing energy from granite structures. During the biblical times, it is hypothesized that granite stones could have been used to harness plasmatic activity from celestial events such as supernova, such as Saturn's supernova. Of course, the idea that ancient civilizations possessed advanced knowledge of energy harnessing, this is a topic of much debate. Some researchers propose that these societies had a profound understanding of natural forces and that they utilized this knowledge in their construction techniques. If ancient builders knew about piezoelectric properties of granite, they might have used these stones to harness and manipulate energy for various purposes, possibly even for communication and healing. Consider the theories of Anthony Peratt. Remember Anthony Peratt? He's a physicist known for his work in plasma physics, and he proposed that many ancient petroglyphs, including those depicting the Z-Pinch Squatterman, he proposes that these are representations of plasma phenomena observed in the ancient sky. According to Peratt, these petroglyphs could be visual records of intense auroral events caused by the high current Z-Pinches in the Earth's magnetosphere. This theory suggests that ancient people witnessed and recorded these plasma events, which might have influenced their construction of megalithic structures. 
The use of granite in Egyptian obelisks and pyramids also points to a possible understanding of energy harnessing. Obelisks, with their tall slender shapes and pyramidian tops, were believed to act as petrified rays of the sun, symbolising the ancient sun's power and its vital role in life and prosperity. The pyramids, with their precise alignments and massive granite blocks, might have served as energy conduits, aligning with astronomical observations and possibly harnessing natural events. While definitive evidence of ancient energy harnessing remains elusive, the theories surrounding the use of granite and the potential advanced knowledge of ancient civilizations offers intriguing possibilities. The connections to Anthony Peratt's plasma theory and the symbolic significance of ancient Egyptian obelisks and pyramids further enrich our understanding of these ancient marvels. And the Karnak stones, with their extensive alignments and mysterious origins, have often been linked to ley lines. Some researchers propose that these stones were deliberately placed along these ley lines to harness or mark the Earth's natural energy fields. The alignments of the stones could suggest an understanding of geomagnetic forces or a symbolic representation of celestial events. Because these stones are arranged in long straight rows, some believe they align with ley lines. Proponents of ley lines argue that ancient sites like Karnak were built on these lines to tap into the Earth's energy. And this suggests that many ancient cultures, including those who built the Karnak stones, may have had a deep understanding of the landscape and its energies. And perhaps some answers to these theories can be found in Christopher Dunn's idea of the Giza power plant. Chris Dunn is a mechanical engineer and he proposed a revolutionary theory in his book The Giza Power Plant, Technologies of Ancient Egypt. He suggests that the Great Pyramid of Giza was not merely a tomb, but a highly sophisticated machine designed to generate and transmit energy. According to Dunn, the pyramid's internal structure, including the king's chamber and the shafts that lead to it, he believes that these were integral components of this energy system. Dunn theorises that the Great Pyramid and many others functioned as a power plant by utilising a combination of mechanical, chemical and acoustic energies. The Queen's Chamber, he suggests, was used to produce hydrogen gas through a chemical reaction. This hydrogen would then flow into the King's Chamber where it would be subjected to vibrations and resonances, converting it into microwaves. These microwaves could then be directed through the pyramid shafts, potentially transmitting energy over long distances. And perhaps the source of this function was the direct harnessing of plasma from above. And just recently, plasma bubbles have been discovered above the Great Pyramid of Giza. During Saturn's supernova, massive amounts of energy were released, including electromagnetic radiation and plasma. If ancient civilizations had knowledge of plasma physics, they might have designed structures like the pyramids to capture and utilize this energy. Chinese scientists, just recently, using advanced radar technology, they detected plasma bubbles hovering above the Great Pyramids. These phenomena are hot pockets of superheated gas that form at low latitudes and can significantly impact satellite communications and GPS systems. These bubbles, which can span thousands of miles, are formed by irregularities in the Earth's ionosphere. This is often triggered by solar activity, such as solar storms. The detection of these bubbles above the Great Pyramid is particularly intriguing, as it suggests a potential interaction between the Earth's magnetic field and this ancient structure. This interaction could be a natural phenomena or a direct result of the pyramid's design, which some believe was intended to harness and manipulate natural plasma energies. If the pyramids were indeed used to harness energy, this energy could have been used for several applications, including providing energy for daily use, similar to how modern day power plants operate, also transmitting signals over long distances using microwaves, and also 
utilising the energy for medical, spiritual purposes, possibly enhancing the effects of rituals and healing practices. Many ancient structures around the world, including the pyramids and the Karnak stones, could have been used for the same purposes, designed for the same reason. The discovery of plasma bubbles above the Great Pyramid of Giza opens up exciting possibilities for understanding the relationship between ancient structures and natural plasmatic phenomena. While the exact implications of these discoveries are still being explored, it does add a fascinating dimension to our knowledge of both the pyramids and plasma physics. As research continues, we may uncover more about these ancient marvels and their interactions with natural forces in the ancient world. But what do you guys think about this? Comments below and thank you for watching.